Aaron Bell was a father, a friend, family member, educator, storyteller, and beautiful human being. Aaron, you will be missed, but we will continue on with your teachings and never forget the lessons you have shared. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this tribute featuring Aaron Bell in his last performance with the White Pine Dancers. Sego! Scano! Ani! Hi. Hi. I just greeted you in three native languages. The first native language that I greeted you in was Mohawk. The way you say hello in Mohawk is you say Sago. So first me, then you. Sago! Sago! So the second native language that I greeted you in was Cayuga. The way you say hello in Cayuga is you say Scano. So first me, then you. Scano! Scano! So good. Third native language that I greeted you in was my language. My name is Aaron. I am Ojibwe, Chippewa, Nawaj Band. My home reserve is called Cape Croker, which is about five hours that way. <laughs> That's by car, okay, not canoe. <laughs> Wait, my people say hello as we say Ani. So first me, then you. Ani. Ani. That's good. The way you guys say hello as you say. Hello. hello. I'd like to say many nyawi, shmigwich, many thank yous for inviting me onto your ship, <laughs> Captain. When I was born, I was adopted out of my First Nations family and given to a non-native family. So for the first 24 years of my life, I grew up non-native. Then I took a job <coughs> at the Woodland Culture Center. And that's when I started to learn about my First Nations culture. So for the past 24 years, I've been learning about First Nations culture. So I kind of sort of got the best of both worlds. I did lots of things growing up. I worked in grocery stores. I worked for the Prison Arts Council. I worked as a youth worker. I uh, was at Kanata Native Village Woodland Culture Center. I started my own business, which is now White Pine Dancers. So we have a dance company of about 30 performers all across Southern Ontario. So we go into festivals, conventions, uh, gatherings all over Canada. We've been to Pier 21 in Halifax, the Folklorama Festival in Winnipeg. We opened up our galleries in Calgary. Just this past Friday, we opened up the c &E on the international stage. We had five, 3,000 audience members by the end of the show. When we first started our show, there was about 1,000 people. But as soon as the people started to hear that drum, it just drew them all in. Our people are very spiritual. People ask us all the time, what religion are you? Are you very religious? And I say, no, we're not very religious. We're, we're more spiritual. We're connected to the land that is around us. So that's pretty much what this drum <clears throat> represents. The drum is round, which is a circle. Our people are known as people of the circle, because in a circle, there's no beginning and there's no end. Everyone is created equal. When you look up into the day sky, you see father, son. Father, son is round. In the night sky, you see grandmother moon. We call the moon our grandmother because grandmother's always guided us home in times of darkness. Grandmother moon is round. We call the earth our mother because all life comes from our mothers. So mother earth is round. Mother earth, father, son, grandmother moon. The beat of the drum always represents the heartbeat of mother earth. The only beat you would hear from this drum is one that sounds like a heartbeat. So whenever our dancers would dance, our dancers always have to touch Mother Earth with their feet in time with the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And we're taught not to stomp, because we want to leave the land as we found it. We're taught to prance or dance on the heels or the tips of our toes, so the grasses that we're dancing upon can regrow in our place after we leave. And so this represents the animal world. This represents plant world. Animal world and plant world have to work together in order for my children's children's children to survive. So when we play the drum, we're honoring Mother Earth, Father Sun, Grandmother Moon, people of the circle, heartbeat of Mother Earth, spirit inside the drum, animal world, and plant world. When I hold the drum, I'm holding it right in the center, not because I'm the most important thing, but because me as a human being, I am the weakest being upon this place. They always teach us in biology that mankind is at the top of the food chain. They're right, we are the greatest killers upon this place. For our people, we turn it upside down. We're at the bottom of the food chain because everything else above us is what my great, 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 great grandchildren will need in order to survive. So when I hold the drum in the center, I'm symbolizing the fact that every one of these strings represents one thing in that circle of life that my children's children's children will need. So there's the two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the swimmers, the flyers, the crawlers, the thunders, the lightnings, father, son, grandmother, moon, and mother earth. All these things 
or what my great 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 grandchildren will need in order to survive. So when we play the drum, honoring Mother Earth, Father Son, Grandmother Moon, people of the circle, heartbeat of Mother Earth, spirit inside the drum, animal world, plant world, and my place in that circle of life. So when you look at a First Nations person playing the drum, you first looked at this drum, first thing you thought of it was, it's a musical instrument. But for our people, it's much more deeper meaning behind what this drum is than just a drum. When we play the drum at any ceremony, powwow, or gathering, we're honoring Mother Earth, Father Sun, Grandmother Moon, people of the circle, heartbeat of Mother Earth, spear inside the drum, animal world, plant world, place in that circle of life, and the healing power of the drum and our parents. Sago, this is the White Pine Dancers, showcasing exhibition style.